When I was at primary school, we went on a school trip to Bridgewater Canal, where we were told about a bridge with 26 planks that children could learn the alphabet from. We walked across this bridge. It was a lovely day out, and I remember at the time thinking, this is an amazing place. I want to live here. In the end, I live nearby. Hi there. As you saw in the last few episodes, on the last episode, a couple of episodes ago, I was talking about um, getting a new tripod and a new easel because they were really heavy when I went up Rivington. And I'm going to be doing a bit more travelling, so I've invested in a very lightweight tripod with the feet that extend so it can get extremely tall in fact it's not that far off the tripod I've already got as far as height goes but as far as weight goes oh my gosh it's so light it's aluminium it's not as sturdy obviously it's it's um it's just a little travel one but it's going to be great for just doing the odd bit of filming whilst I'm out and about Packing material. What can we use that? And in the big box, as usual, you find a smaller box. Here it is. Yeah, that's crazy. The difference in weight is crazy. We have an aluminium. lightweight easel. I didn't go for the most expensive one obviously so it's got extendable legs. I like that. If you look here it slides up and down like that and then just locks as easy as that. Oh I'm impressed with that. Right let's see what else it does. Oh they slide up I see. I see I see they slide up and lock out like that so that comes in and you press it down to lock it out we've got these bits that slide up and if you look this metal piece of aluminium that your picture goes on has got holes in that locate onto those like So, and then you'd have, oh I see, and then depending on how high it is on the legs, I was wondering how that bit was going to work. Physics, that's what it is, it's physics. And then we have the extending legs. looks like this is actually taller than some of the wooden ones I have as well. So I'll be able to do um, standing up pictures, which is something I have had to compromise on. Look at that. So I've just put the little nuts through there, the little screws up through there, and that just sits on. And you just tighten it up, hand tight them at the back. And this bit here, that unlocks at the back, holds the top of your picture in place. It's even got a little, oh look at this, look, 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 look. Da, 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 da. <laughs> so, put your picture in there, lock it down, bring it down onto the thing, lock it there. Dell ain't going anywhere. And I think if it's windy, you attach a little guy line, stick it in the floor with a peg. That's going to be quite sturdy. Oh, that's actually sturdier than I thought it was going to be. I'm very impressed. This is really easy to use. Everything is just clip out, clip in. 
So that's at its full height now. But if I stand up now and lift this up, Wow. Right, let me just get a, the sort of size canvas that you'd take painting. So that's the sort of one that you'd take outside with you, maybe a bit bigger. But if I put that there, the top of it down, unlock that, lock that, lock that. That is really sturdy. And I can, I can do that pet standing up. I easily do that standing up. Let's get a bigger one. Here we go, a larger canvas. This is 51 by 61 centimetres. So if I bring this and stick it in, oh, look at this, right? So it's, it sits on there really well. Turn this round and show you. It sits on there really well, nice and sturdy. This is the height that I'm stood up now so, and I'm five foot four, so average height, you can see here this bit. Like I did it before, release it at the back and it comes down and just hooks on. So this bar with those nuts, if I just lift that off like so, they can move up and down like that. But if you've actually got quite a large piece, there is down here, further down the legs, an extra set here and here. So you could set it quite low, have it quite low. I mean, it, it's very, very uh, practical, really easy to use, very light, which is the main reason I got it, and very adaptable. Right, so I'm gonna put a, and I am so impressed with this, on opening. Now, I've never had one of these before, so everything I've just done there was just instinctive. I haven't read any instructions or anything like that. I've been um, completely the opposite to what I usually am because I usually read all the instructions. And I've just seen if I can use it. And I can. It's really instinctive. So I'm going to put a link to this in the comments. Uh, I'm really impressed. And this isn't sponsored or anything. I haven't got this for free. And in the next bit, I might even do some painting. See you in a bit. And as a comparison, here's the difference. My old setup, about 10 or 12 kilograms. My new setup, about four or five kilograms. Difference is crazy. I don't even think it's that, maybe 10 to 3 kilograms, something like that. I'm really impressed. I'll tell you how I get on using them for painting. Here I am at Worsley Green. I'm just going to go and find Alphabet Bridge. I've forgotten where it is, so I'm just going to walk around the area. I know it's here somewhere. Here we are at Worsley Green with the beautiful houses and the monument. So, if I remember rightly, we actually stopped here and had a packed lunch. Uh, the next place I'm going to go and find is behind here, across the bridge. Fascinating information here. Over the bridge. And something very, very interesting about the Bridgewater Canal at Worsley. Something a little bit different. It's orange. Now I remember from school that this canal is actually orange because 
of the iron content. Where it comes out of the, water, uh, of the ground, it's actually clear. And we actually went to the source and collected a jar. Ooh. We actually collected a jar of um, clear water and took it back to school. And over the next week or so, it did turn orange. And it is the iron content. And as it moves further down, it turns more orange. And then obviously as it mixes with other water sources, it turns clear again. But that is why Bridgewater Canal is orange. It's actually rusty. I think I've found it. I think that this here is actually Alphabet Bridge. Now I've got to find a way of getting to it. I'm pretty sure I have to go either back that way and round or up to the road and round. I'll just have to keep exploring. Beautiful setting to do it in though. Yeah, it's definitely over there. Now then, there's the road. I can see a path coming down to it. That's the way I'm heading. Oh, fantastic. And the sun's coming out as well. Such a lovely morning. found a way up. Yep, yeah, up to the road. And we're going down that way. Oh, look. <laughs> One of the really old telephone boxes. Down we go. And over the edge, you can see there, Alphabet Bridge. That's where I'm heading and hopefully I'll be able to find somewhere to do a little uh, bit of sketching. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, perfect. And that way, under there, is to the other side of the Delph. Let's see how I get on at setting up this tripod and the easel, the lightweight ones. One. And two. I've got the camera on a little, tiny little thing at the moment, a handheld one. But uh, I'm gonna set it up on this one. Well, it certainly traveled here well. go all set up that was simple enough dead easy to set up let's have a go with the easel there's no wind today so I don't need to worry about putting any guy ropes out or anything to stop them falling over but it might be something that I want to take um, if I'm going up fell walking or anything I'll, I will take guy ropes and um, pegs just to help them stay down. Right, I'm gonna set this up to the highest height so I can stand up and paint. Let's get that down first. There we go. That's the only fiddly bit actually, is getting that bit on. Now, just to make sure that I was doing a proper test, I brought quite a big sketchbook, quite a heavy sketchbook as well. on there like so right this is where it's being temperamental actually that's not bad not bad at all 
get that going down. So for a first time out, and I'm not used to it yet, all right, so now I'm going to extend the legs. I had no problems with that bit at all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer this camera onto that tripod and show you what we're up to. So we've got the tripod and the easel set up and staying off the path so people can actually get past but that is actually a great height for me to work standing up so i don't need to worry about a chair for this one brilliant so this is the tripod that i was using to carry and that i had sat on the floor to set up with it's just a little dinky thing but it's great for just making sure that you're camera stays upright it's fantastic I love it and it fits in the bag it's dead light I'm going to do two sketches I think just playing around with composition really whilst I'm here I'll take some photographs as well so the first one I'm thinking of doing the bridge I'm not going into any detail I'm just um, looking at angles proportions that sort of thing looking at my darkest tones like so yeah it's definitely what, what is in the background is actually really important to get alphabet bridge standing out properly that is a really really dark um tall tree there and if i did it as dark as it looks it would um completely dominate so that's definitely going to have atmospheric perspective knocking it right back same with that tree there which is a beautiful shape actually i might have got the perspective off slightly here but as i've said before i don't usually do brilliant sketches I'm just gathering information, that's all. Yeah. Messed up the proportions, that should be coming further down. Never mind, never mind. It's a mistake that I won't make in the painting. That's what I think, every time I do a mistake in a sketch, in a prep sketch, I think, well, now I know that that can happen, I'll be more likely to look out for it in the final painting. You see, what I'm also looking for at the moment is a good angle to be able to get those letters floating off the bridge. I've got it in my head. Um, it's just finding the right composition for that to work. I I'll need to be a bit closer in on the bridge to be able to do it properly. But whilst I'm getting all this information, Plans are forming, let me tell you. The straighter lines here will pick out the brickwork, and then here we'll do some curved foliage textures. When I'm doing foliage, I, 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 I try and draw the shadows that are behind the foliage as well, and then do some nice, neat hatching across there to give that feeling of it being straight. I might be a bit cheeky and uh, do a bit more of that later, but that's where I want, that's the information that I needed to get from here. And that's where I'm up to. Right, the bottom one. Let's try. Oh, this is good. Look at this, both hands. I'm going to try a straight up and over, I think. And I'm going to, there's three lamp posts. Now, if I get from round about here, oh, that's interesting. There's three lamp posts creating perspective with the lines of the, oh, 
This is quite exciting. Oh my god, this might actually turn out to be the um, angle that I go for. Let's see. Got the steps going up there. This is where the alphabet's going to come off here. I do like those lamp posts and the line that they give. I could actually afford to go up to there with the second composition. So that's interesting. And there's a really nice tree in the background. And there's the bank and the canal and the building. So I could actually go quite high up here. Do you know, this almost might be, I was thinking of doing a landscape, but no, this is going to be a portrait landscape. A portrait landscape, who'd have thought? This is going to be a portrait landscape. Portrait. And it's definitely this angle that I want to do with the letters A, B, C, D. All floating off it. Ha 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 ha. And floating down the river, getting smaller. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. There's going to be a lot of planning of structures in this painting. It's going to be a good one. The people around here do so well with their gardens. It makes it an absolute pleasure. So thank you to the people of Worsley as well for making your area so beautiful and inspiring. That's all the information I'm going to need. So I'm just going to take a couple of photographs of the um, lampposts and we can get back. I've done my little bit of filming in this beautiful little spot. I'm going to go across the bridge now. I'm just surrounded. It's fantastic. Cross the bridge and head off back to the van. For years I thought this was Alphabet Bridge and I kept thinking, well, they must have taken all the planks off it then. It must have had 26 planks on it at some point. And it was only when it was renovated a few years ago that uh, I realised I was in completely the wrong place. Alphabet Bridge is round that corner. 